Um, we're looking at over 220 million Americans who just in the last several months died. Hello, I'm Elke de Klerk from the Netherlands, and uh, I want to state that we do not have a medical pandemic or epidemic. We have to prepare for a more angry world, and uh, how to prepare? Uh, it means to take the necessary action. What we want to do in Davos this year in this respect is to push the reset button. History would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset. The next time someone tells us uh, that tackling climate change is either too costly or too difficult. I think we need to remind them and remind ourselves of what just is happening right now. Treat the climate crisis like, like you treat any other crisis. We must treat this uh, new world order, new, this new world of COVID, we must treat this new world of COVID, even in our own homes, with a high level of care and caution. It is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate and rebalance our world. We not only have to demand change, but also create change. And then we need to couple that with new initiatives to equip more people with the digital skills they'll need not just to have a tech job, but a job that is increasingly tech enabled in almost every part of the economy. At the start of the pandemic, working from home might have felt like a welcome change. Now, with longer days and less interaction, some employees are starting to feel burned out. Some employers are turning to software to monitor what their employees are doing all day long. You need private sector capital private sector ingenuity, private sector technology, and private sector capabilities to come to the party. This morning, a mind-boggling report on layoffs. More than 6.6 .6 million Americans filing new claims for unemployment insurance last week, the largest number in a single week ever. We will now start a quite a high number of task forces to look at all the different issues and we will present all those ideas to the people assembled in Davos. And just like that, everything in the world is made right and pure again. The Great Reset. What could be simpler? In terms of mask use in the community, uh, I would stress again at the moment, we do not uh, think that is a good idea, partly because of that uh, constrained supply, um, but also the effectiveness in relation to, uh, to people uh, walking around with, with masks. So for the moment, mask use is uh, not, not recommended for the Australian public. It is one of the greatest medical scandals of the century, according to a leading health expert in Brussels. The Council of Europe Health's chief has accused major pharmaceutical firms of organising a campaign of panic and unduly influencing World Health Organisation decisions. And with European countries now burdened with bills for millions of unwanted doses of the swine flu vaccine, he wants an investigation. Our science correspondent Tom Clark has this report. Flu viruses can spread. 64,000 people dead, tens of thousands hospitalised, a country crippled by a virus. The predictions for the impact of swine flu on Britain were grim. The government's response, spending hundreds of millions of pounds on antiviral drugs and vaccines, adverts and leaflets. But 10 months into the pandemic, only 355 Britons have died. And globally, the virus hasn't lived up to our fears. Were governments misled into preparing for the worst? Politicians in Brussels are now asking for an investigation into the role pharmaceutical companies played in influencing political decisions that led to a swine flu spending spree. There must be a process to, to get more transparency how the decisions in the, in the WHO, how they function and who is influencing the decisions of the WHO and what is the role of the pharmaceutical industry there. I'm very suspicious about the processes which are behind this uh, pandemic. The Council of Europe Committee want the investigation to focus on the World Health Organization's decision to lower the threshold required for a pandemic to be formally declared. The world is now 
at the start of the 2009 influenza pandemic. When this happened in June last year, governments had to activate huge pre-prepared contracts for drugs and vaccines with manufacturers. They also want to probe ties between key WHO advisors and drug companies. Who is deciding what the risk is? Is it the pharmaceutical companies who want to sell drugs? Or is it someone making a decision based on the perceived danger? In this case, it appears that the danger was vastly exaggerated. And was it exaggerated by the pharmaceutical companies in order to make money? Our government, like many others, is now paying the price for being prepared.